Good afternoon. My name is Tara Furlong. I've been working in the English Adult Literacies Specific Learning Difficulties and Disabilities in Technology for since the turn of the millennium in the UK and abroad. I also have a background in workplace learning. During this brief presentation on technology and innovation literacies, I'd like to ask the audience to keep a note of literacy skills that could be developed and practical project ideas that surface for your own context. You should now see a poll on your screen asking which have been your most successful experiences of technology in literacy teaching and learning context. I'd be grateful if you could jot some comments in which we'll share later. We were asked to discuss the role for technology in literacy education and to share some best practice headlines. So I've adopted the strategy of outlining a four tips trajectory which I hope you'll find useful. As educators in such a diverse field, I'm sure you have a wide range of experience in using technology to develop adult literacies and variable access to technologies in your practice. As such, the first tip I would offer is to find your way to a well-beaten track. Whether this means to find out how others have been implementing what successfully, or to hash out your own experience from scratch until it works. Whichever you decide, you need to link to established literacy learning practices. I'll explain this in more detail shortly and trial run until you're comfortable. You also need to find out what already exists in your institution. You'd be amazed at the hidden resources and what your students are already using. I would strongly suggest, at least in part, trial running in situ so that you can iron out technological hiccups with IT support in parallel to developing your teaching and learning competence experimenting with the new technology. Here I've generated a word cloud of a wide range of common activities that involve and develop literacy skills, as much with pen and paper as via online or computer-based activity. If you're not familiar with integrating technology into your teaching and learning practice, I'd suggest picking one or two that are particularly relevant to your context and experimenting with them before expanding your range. So, for example, storyboarding is a common tool in storytelling, a fundamental literacy skill, but also in project management and design, in terms of outlining structure, key features and stages. There are many apps that provide frames, characters, voiceover, sound that can be experimented with, the benefit being that drawing skills are in no way necessary. Another idea is collaborative mind mapping. Put a topic on the table and everyone can use their mobile phones to contribute ideas to a shared mind map that could also be displayed on the board and access from home for writing up. Tweeting can be used to help students summarise succinctly. Online recruitment or professional network websites can be utilised to create and maintain CVs and communicate with recruiters. No more lost details. Apparently up to 90% of public state interaction now happens electronically. Benefits claims, tax returns. These involve extensive reading and comprehension as well as production skills. I've watched students, not mine, in functional skills maths exams struggle and probably fail for lack of basic ICT skills in practice. Sometimes very small actions and involvement can lead to significant improvement in people's life chances, such as achieving the qualification they have otherwise put all the work into developing the knowledge and skills for. Most of it is not reinventing the wheel, rather recognising and becoming familiar with the high quality facilities that already exist. There's a lot of debate and drumming around technology in education. No one would deny that it has initially high staff up and running costs in terms of equipment, setup and maintenance, support service, development of teaching and learning frameworks, materials, practices and provision and skills. However, people tend to enjoy interacting with multimedia gadgets and appreciate the additional support such as storage and accessibility that's part of the package that they find their feet. In particular, cloud storage and multi-platform, multi-device access means you can work from anywhere, at any time, on any device. Integrating technology into teaching and learning provision keeps us as professionals and our students abreast of changing work, workplace and social practices. For example, online recruitment, collaborative file production or meeting by webinar. Technology increases reach and individualises provision. From the targeted advertising to 24 hour anywhere from any device access. It contributes to longer term productivity and innovation. 
Increased personalization in education spells differentiation of materials, pacing, choice, modalities, spelling and grammar checking, speech to text and back again, visual impairment adjustments, file and data storage and tracking as much portfolios as attendance. Technology is interactive. It stimulates social interaction, which we'll come back to shortly, multimodal expression and flexible networks of knowledge and practice. It's market breaking. Finally, our own con continuous professional development. Aside from contributing to the cutting edge of teaching and learning provision, improving curriculum offer and increasing interest in dissemination, it expands the opportunities for developing our own career paths. There are multiple avenues for improving our own knowledge, skills and range, participating in research and policy development, as well as for engaging in new workflow. OK, moving on from finding your way to a well-beaten track, I'd suggest keep it simple and for real purposes. We discussed a moment ago technology-enabled versions of established literacy practices, such as storytelling, collaborative mind mapping, tweeting, recruitment, and liaison with state agencies. I thought I'd take you through a handful of examples in more detail. You can see here on the right a Facebook page for RAPAL, Research and Practice in Adult Literacy, with a top post showing an event, their annual conference. You can also see a link to online ticketing. Learners frequently host events as part of their course or outside lives to celebrate achievements or engage in fundraising. In addition to standard posters, flyers and word of mouth, learners can be encouraged to set up and disseminate events via, for example, Facebook, including online ticketing, which may or may not involve sales. For those who are unsure about using Facebook with their learners, there are options such as Edmodo, which allow closed groups, limit interaction and give more teacher control. It's a form of learning platform which utilizes learners' likely familiarity with how Facebook functions in response to concerns about vulnerable learners in online learning spaces. Creating Facebook events can be limited to quite simple key information form filling activity and image addition, or extended to sizable description and marketing activity. Ticketing involves similar literacy skills with increased options for data creation and analysis, including ICT and numeracy skills. Next, we have wiki spaces. Most educators have heard of Wikipedia, the online publicly created encyclopedia. Wikispaces is a similar idea created around classrooms or groups of learners and enables the creation and sharing of text and projects in an online shared classroom, which includes assessment facilities that is in many ways similar to Moodle or other learning platforms. Facebook, Edmodo and Wikispaces are free platforms, as is Google Docs, which we'll look at now. Google Docs provides a pared down version of Office software and document storage that can be accessed from anywhere at any time via any device. It runs online. It also allows real time sharing and co production. This means that a group of learners can collaborate on writing a report, compiling research, creating a presentation, or analyzing data. It includes formatting and equations and basic features such as, as a revision history, spelling and grammar checking comments and even has a chat feature if co-workers are working on a file at the same time, ideal for project work. This brings us on to online polling and surveys, usually comprising basic free versions and pay versions for additional features. The one here is Poll Daddy. It allows open and closed questions to be set up. This can range from organising the best day and time for people to meet to a full questionnaire. Results can be compiled and analysed in a range of ways, from word clouds to graphs and charts, and full sophisticated data analysis. Participants can respond online by a text message, even by a tweeting. Amazing. Finally, I wanted to revisit BBC SkillsWise, which has always had a great range of free resources encouraging mastery of the nuts and bolts of literacy, community, and other subject areas, and has recently undergone significant investment and transformation. It includes areas for adult skills development with appropriate adult context and materials, knowledge and skills development. So we've had finding your way to a well-beaten track and keep it simple and for real purposes. Tip three is to maximize social networking. We've mentioned collaboration quite a few times and team project work, 
the soft skills employers look for. They also contribute to developing tolerance, negotiation, participation, role allocation and accommodation, as much citizenship attitudes as business. The online environment, for all its evils, provides us with interactive communities of practice, collaborative, literate practice. One look at this map of the world shows us the extent of this. It's a map of Facebook usage globally. Where there are people, and the more people, the better financed, the more online activity. And this is just Facebook. Look at some of the other famous network logos that are global phenomena. To function, the positive feedback loops of communication emphasize meaning via content, structure, and expression. Can anyone hear the functional skills criteria? Peer feedback, ratings, and commentary home skills. If people can't understand one another but have objectives to reach, they just keep bashing away at it until they're communicating effectively. I thought Amazon would be a good example of how the socially interactive, data-rich environment of Web 2.0, in comparison with the static web pages of old, shows day-to-day -day purchasing interacting with literacy practices. You should now see on your screens another poll asking in which ways are you aware that Amazon is interactive and how does this promote literacy skills? If you could take a moment to note your ideas. Reading an Amazon page is a feat in itself. Have you seen the number of sections? So aside from the brief product summary, including image at the top, what else do we have? Well, drawn from extensive data analysis and personalised to the consumer, a range of pricing options including from Amazon Marketplace, flag entrepreneurism for learners, followed by linked products you might not have realised you want or need, an electronic personal shopping advisor. Next, we have technical specifications with associated specialist vocabulary and a summary of customer reviews. 842 averaging 4.4 or 5 stars in this case, which we'll return to in a moment. And an extended marketing style product description. Critical reading skills, anyone? And what people actually bought after viewing this item. Valuable purchasing decision-making information. OK, two pages of customer reviews, introduced with a graphic summary. The top reviews are those which have been rated most helpful by peers, with the option of peer commentary. Critical reading and writing skills are developed via reviews that are an excellent way for students to engage with cogent communication around their everyday purchasing practices. The column on the right contrasts the most recent reviews briefly with the extended rated ones on the left. Interesting comparisons of review styles. At the end of reviews, we have the option of contributing our own. We also see our viewing history, a useful tracker, and recommended viewing for you based on this history, more electronic personal shopping advisor. Once you've finished purchasing a product, you're given options to share this across your social media networks, which is likely to encourage further discussion, as well as a range of linked purchasing options. In summary, we've had a wide range of opportunities to develop reading, writing, numeracy and data analysis skills in sophisticated, real-life, real-purpose scenarios, including by a collaborative team in project work. Finally, after finding our way to a well-beaten track, keeping it simple and for real purposes and maximising social networking, I'll leave you with give your students the space and support to innovate and fly. Students have their own intrinsic motivations and profiles. By creating meaningful communities of practice between peers, such as setting up a shared Google Doc presentation on a project, for example, by supporting and encouraging meaningful interaction, for example, by making sure they have clear project outlines, criteria, presentation frames and skills, by guiding their feedback through peer feedback frames and, and criteria, ideally personalised to projects and individuals, and tracking development across a course. Students can take significant ownership of their learning and development and will hopefully outfly you in their areas of excellence. I'm thinking more F1 or a design, new designs exhibition here than Icarus or the Twin Towers, of course. Utilising technology in your own daily practice is the most effective way of building your own confidence, knowledge and skills. 
To this end, I would draw your attention to the Open University's collaboration with leading UK and European universities, creating the UK's FutureLearn MOOC platform, free online courses on a huge range of topics, and to RAPAL, Research and Practice in Adult Literacy, a national members' organisation specialising in adult literacies, we produce a now digital journal three times a year where practitioners, be they teachers, learners, researchers or managers in the field, write about innovative teaching and learning practice and their own challenges, research and projects. RAPAL organises conferences, provides a discussion forum and has pan-European and wider international links. In liaison with NIACE, we've created a full-day module on using social networking in adult literacy where we look in more detail at a range of technological options and applications to develop adult literacy, teaching and learning practice. Participants are supported to use the technology, explore teaching and learning options in their own context, and discuss their practice with peers. I'll leave you with a poll asking which literacy skills, development and potential project, project ideas occurred to you during the course of this presentation. Please contribute your ideas and they'll be sent round to the presentation later. My name is Tara Furlong and I can be contacted on tara.furlong at designingfutures.co.uk. Thank you for participating.